True story. In our family, we like snakes. One time, a nice gopher snake was hanging around the yard, but then she wasn't around anymore. One day, Dad sees her, but she was looking sick, so he bends down to check on her. Just as he was stroking her head, he saw the rattle. Right then, my father experienced a frame shift. His decisions and assumptions transformed as he jumped back. He thought he was helping a harmless snake, a small decision. Instead, he was staring at a deadly situation. Framing a decision is clarifying the decision you're taking on. A helpful frame helps you zoom in on the decision that makes the most sense to tackle. An inappropriate frame can cause you to miss what's most important, like the critical information and unexplored alternatives Dad missed when he pet the snake. A decision frame has three components. The purpose, what we hope to accomplish with the decision. The perspective, our point of view, including other ways to approach the decision or how others might view it. And the scope, what to include or exclude in the decision. Think of framing a decision like taking a picture. The picture's purpose determines the type of shot you set up. Between a selfie to post on the web, a headshot to land an acting job, or an action shot to publish on the sports page, the effort, style, and intent will be very different. Similarly, your perspective will shift and your scope will zoom in or out to focus on what's most important to include in the picture. The angle or point of view is your perspective. What you include in the picture is the scope. A helpful frame can vastly improve a decision. For example, an expensive hotel was getting complaints from guests frustrated by waiting for the elevator. The hotel invited two firms to consult. One was an engineering firm. The other was an interior design firm. Each made a proposal, but they were quite different. The engineers recommended installing faster motors, expected to cost $750,000. This would reduce average waiting times from 1 minute to 40 seconds. The design firm recommended putting a large mirror and a potted plant by the elevator on each floor, costing just $45,000. These improvements would not speed up the elevators, but they would make guests less aware of the wait. The designer's perspective focused on how people felt during their wait, rather than how long they waited. The hotel went with the plants and mirrors, the customers were satisfied, and the hotel saved a boatload of money. Getting to an appropriate frame is tricky. Sometimes a decision is larger than it appears, sometimes smaller. The HIP, or HIP check, is a useful method for determining the importance and size of a decision. To run a HIP check, imagine different possible outcomes of your decision. Answer the following questions. H. How will things change based on the decision? I. Will the impact be just on me or impact others as well? P. Will the decision and the outcomes be permanent or reversible? Deciding not to eat meat for lunch won't change much, only impacts you, and is reversible by dinner. Deciding to be vegetarian for life will change your diet, impact your family, and be permanent, depending on your purpose, perspective, and scope. The hip check helps you quickly size up the decision, so you can better assess how much attention to give it. In defining a helpful frame, we want a scope that's not too big, not too small, but just right to solve the problem. Wrestling with what you want to do with the rest of your life is probably not a helpful frame when considering next semester's classes. Choosing based on what your friends are taking, but leaving out the credits needed to graduate on time is unhelpfully narrow. There's no objectively right frame, but a helpful frame might include exploring future interests, completing requirements, and building friendships. Considering your frame and consciously defining your approach can save you time and even your life, so it's the best place to start a decision process. The right answer to the wrong decision is unlikely to get what you want. Slow down to speed up.